Hello everyone and welcome to today's news charter. Uh, so as you all know, we discuss the approach to cover current affairs through our news charter series in order for you to be able to understand how to cover the current affairs uh, for the UPSC civil services examination. So let us begin with today's news charter. These are the topics which are in focus today. Uh, we'll move on to the prelims practice question of the day, which is based on light emitting diodes or LEDs. So, uh, which of the following, uh, which of the below mentioned statements regarding LEDs is or are incorrect? Please focus on whether they are asking correct or incorrect because it leads to a lot of negative marking often. So, the first statement is diode's primary purpose is to allow current flow in only one direction. Now, this is a correct statement because uh, light emitting diodes work on the PN junction principle. So, this PN junctions basically allow currents to flow only in one direction. That is the basic functioning. So, this is correct. Second, it works on the phenomenon of electroluminescence. So, what happens in the PN junction is the N junction has excess of electrons. And the P-junction has some holes where electrons were earlier present, but now they aren't present. So it is an empty space with a positive charge. So the electrons travel from the N-junction to the P-junction whenever there is a voltage applied across. So uh, this is how when an electron meets a hole, energy is generated. And if the energy light lies in the frequency of visible light spectrum, then we see visible light. Uh, which is the light that we see in the light emitting diodes. So that is true. This entire phenomena is known as electroluminescence. So the statement is also correct. LEDs cannot produce all three primary correct colors as an incorrect statement. LEDs are able to produce all three primary colors. And through combining these uh, primary colors, we can also produce secondary colors. So uh, the correct answer would be three only. Only the third statement is incorrect. So let's move on to the first important news article of the day. Should AI models be allowed to use copyright material? Now, uh, see, uh, there has been some news going on that the New York Times has filed a lawsuit against OpenAI, uh, Chat GPT. Uh, accusing them of copyright infringement that they are using all the copyright material for the training purposes and they should not be allowed to do so without any permission or compensation. Now this is a matter which is under subjudice and uh, uh, you just keep a track on the events that follow this. Uh, let's see what the courts hold. Both the sides cases are very strong but another related topic which is important for our uh, you know, understanding is uh, there has been a lot of, uh, you know, issues, debates going on on whether AI generated material can come under copyright. So whatever articles or, you know, answers, uh, news, whatever uh, you ask AI and the AI generates, uh, the contention is that whether it, whether it can come under copyright or not. So in US so far, the Copyright Office has indicated that purely AI content, uh, AI generated content is not uh, going to be a copyright material because they hold that there has to be an element of human, uh, you know, has to be involved in that. Now, uh, the precedent through uh, the very good precedent that we have for this is the monkey selfie issue, which happened in Indonesia, whereby a photographer by the name of David Slater had set up a camera to click a picture of an uh, endangered monkey. And the monkey went and clicked the selfie himself. So there was a lot of contention as to who will be the owner of this image, who will be able to copyright this image. And uh, after a lot of debates, uh, the final verdict was that nobody can claim copyright on this because animals or any other non-human objects do not have a standing in the court. So they cannot claim a copyright. Uh, and uh, as of human, uh, since nobody was involved here, 
so even the photographer cannot uh, claim the copyright so this is the precedent which we use and we say that any non human generated content cannot be claimed for a copyright now what is important for us to understand is also the indian position uh, with respect to this so indian copyrights office uh, is a little messed up in this because we are not uh, even we are not clear what is the position uh, if we go by the copyrights act of 1957 there is no way a non human can be granted a copyright but uh, there have been some instances where the joint work of human and ai have been granted copyrights and again there were a lot of debates regarding that so the position is not clear but uh, you should be able to understand the issue and these kind of questions are very probable in interviews because they will always uh, you know uh, want to know your opinion on this this kind of issues are very uh, subjective and since uh, ai is a very hot topic so uh, you should always you know keep an eye on this <clears throat> so we'll move on to our next news article uh, which is the sub categorization of uh, scheduled castes so the union government has formed a five member committee recently to evaluate and work out a method for equitable distribution of benefits for the scheduled castes uh so as you all know reservation has been going on uh, since the time we have got independence but uh, uh, you know uh, the benefits of the reservation has not percolated equally for all the communities and it is often held that the uh, benefits of reservation has been cornered by some particular uh, sections within the castes so uh the issue has been that the madiga community has been asking for sub categorization since 1994 and uh, considering this uh, recently a committee has been set up to study the sub categorization now from a legal perspective first of all you should know that article 341 of the constitution empowers the president to notify the castes which come under scs and sts and uh, the courts have on various occasions struck down various acts and laws of the state government which uh, you know talked about the categorization of uh, sub categorization of scs because they hold that the states cannot unilaterally change the position uh, which president has drawn uh, in accordance to the article 341 according to the legal experts uh nothing in constitution prohibits the parliament from sub categorizing scs or sts but uh, as the court also held in the indra soni case uh, you have to show the backwardness so you have to show accurate data regarding it so in order to justify the sub categorization there has to be a complete caste census uh, where 100% counting should be done of all <coughs> sorry of all the castes and uh, you need to also you know show why this particular caste is con being considered under sub categorization and how they have not been able to benefit from the uh, you know reservation system so this is about uh, the sub categorization very important topic we can totally expect a question in mains regarding this another important topic which has been in news since a long time is regarding the genetically modified crops so as you all know uh, uh, we do not completely still allow the indigenous production of genetically modified crops and the court has put a stay uh, on various occasions regarding the indigenous production of gm crops but the center points out recently that india is already importing and consuming the oil derived from gm crops including soya bean oil and you know mustard oil as well since you know india is world's second largest consumer and top importer of vegetable oil india has to meet nearly 50 to 60% of its edible oil demands through imports so that makes a good case for us to start producing indigenously since it puts a lot of fiscal burden on the government as well because of the imports and uh, dara mustard uh, hybrid uh, 11 is the uh, mustard crop uh, which we are talking about uh, here uh and uh, the gm crop has increased the yield per hectare by 25 to 30% and it is also tolerant to a lot of weeds which is also uh, a very big problem in the indian uh, you know uh, climatic conditions so all these issues are there and uh, gm crops 
uh, you should understand what are the problems and uh, what are the benefits of GM crops. And there can be a full-fledged question in means regarding the GM crops as well. So these are the important news topics for today. Uh, let's study the mains question for the day. Discuss the need and viability of subcategorization of scheduled castes in India and the issues surrounding it. So you need to uh, put down uh, first about the Article 341 in the introduction. Then you need to put down why there is need for subcategorization with examples if possible. You mention about the Madiga communities which we also studied. Then uh, you list down about the viability. Is it possible according to you know the legal issues and the social issues as well because caste census as a whole is a very big uh, you know contentious issue in India. You list down the problems which can happen in the subcategorization and uh, you can suggest a way forward. You can mention about the committee reports as well. There have been a lot of committees which have suggested subcategorization of scheduled caste. So like this, you can make a wholesome answer. Main pointers uh, is regarding the antibiotic usage. As you know that antibiotic resistance has been very high in India and according to a WHO report, Antimicrobial resistance was directly responsible for 1.27 million global deaths. And uh, according to the survey by NCDC, in 13 out of 20 hospitals, more than 70% of the patients were given at least one dose of antibiotics. So antibiotic resistance in India has been ha happening due to incessant use of antibiotics, non-completion of course, non-adherence uh, to the, you know, uh, H1 drug uh, criteria. So these are some of the issues with the antibiotic usage. You can note down these means pointers. <clears throat> Prelims pointers, Wolf Warrior Diplomacy. Now you should understand what is uh, Wolf Warrior Diplomacy and which country is practicing this. So as you all know, China has been practicing Wolf Warrior Diplomacy as it has been having a very aggressive stance towards its neighbors, uh, and also towards its, you know, pure uh, global superpowers, whereby it is having military presence all over the Pacific Ocean, and uh, it is trying to claim a lot of territories, and it is trying to, you know, win a lot of territories through an aggressive, uh, through its aggressive actions. So this is what Wolf Fourier diplomacy mean, and uh, you can read a little bit more about it. They can ask it in prelims like. The wall Fourier diplomacy is related to what? So this is an important prelims point. And with this, today's news charter comes to an end. Uh, just read a little bit more about all the topics that we have discussed today. And we'll see you again tomorrow. All the best.